Hi folks, Shabbat Shalom. This is Friday evening. The sun has not set, the chickens are put away, and the cats are fed. Cece was in here just a minute ago. Um, if you want to have somebody hate you, and you want to have them really fight with you, talk about the Bible. Really, talk about the Bible. It's, it, it amazes me how I can be with somebody and I can keep from saying certain trigger words and they're just bless their socks off by what I share. But if I say certain things, oh, I become their enemy. This is one of these studies here. With Paul, I'm using him, with Paul, what Bibles did he have? What was it accessible to him? I'm going to show people, and I'm thinking maybe of presenting this at the prison, I don't know, that people don't believe what the Bible says because they want to believe what they think it says. The word scripture is simply a Latin word for writings. From what I understand from different people's studies, other people's studies, that the Hebrew Bible and the Septuagint Bible was present back in Paul's day, okay? And maybe in the, in the scrolls or, or different forms of stuff. But I want to read to you some stuff, and you might find this interesting. And a couple of these verses is what we used at, back at the Bible school that I attended. It was an interdenominational Bible school 400 years ago, it seems like. Uh, Hebrews 4.12. And from what I've understood and learned that Barnabas actually wrote the, the Hebrew, the book of Hebrews. And a lot of people put Paul's name on it because I think they thought it would be more authoritative. But this is what it was one of my favorite verses. I actually learned it from the, one of the head teachers because he quoted a lot. Hebrews 4.12 For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces even to the dividing of soul and spirit, joint and marrow, and it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That was one of my all-time favorite verses because it showed the power of the Holy Bible. But now I see that Barnabas, or Paul, was talking about the Old Testament. If I believe what this says, it is referring to the Old Testament in real time when he wrote this. This next verse is even more interesting. 2 Timothy 2.15 Do your best to present yourself to God, Yahweh, as, an, as one approved, and a workman who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. Study to show thyself approved unto Yahweh, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Right here, right here, present yourself to Yahweh as one approved. See, people take and will confute, will, count, will counter me and argue with me and say that I'm twisting and not understanding. But here, if we are studying for our Heavenly Father, to present ourselves as one approved to Him with the Old Testament. See, that's why I'm really, really studying more and more about the, the Torah and the Old Testament. Because I'm seeing that is my primary source. And the New Testament is better understood when you understand the Old Testament. Amen? And this one is your usual traditional... 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. Or actually, you'll see here in a minute. All scripture, and every, I have looked this up in a number of different places. The word is is not there. I'm not there. It was added by man, the, the translators. All scripture inspired or breathed out by God is useful for teaching and for reproof and correction and for training in righteousness. All scripture inspired or breathed out. All scripture. The Old Testament. 
this is why I can't get through people's heads. They argue, well, Paul was prophesying. No, he wasn't. That's not what it says. He's writing a letter to Timothy. And as proof, look at the context. As Paul was writing this letter, the Old Testament Torah, prophets, and laws was the scriptures he was referring to. He did not say, my letters is, it's a man-made doctrine said that. It's our, our man-made doctrine said that. Paul didn't say that. See, 2 Timothy 3.15. From childhood, Timothy, you have been acquainted with the sacred, holy, set-apart writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Yeshua, and profitable for teaching, for reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness, that the man of Yahweh may be completely equipped for every good work. Let's talk about the Old Testament. We know for a fact that Paul's letters... And the Gospels were not accumulated until someone had mentioned that maybe Marcion actually started the first canon. And he was a total Paulinist. He believed that Paul's letters were superior over to uh, the Lord Jesus' letters. See? And so there's a whole history thing on that. I've got one of the books I've started reading, but i got so many books to read, I can't keep up on it. But if you want to challenge anybody with even Paul, the spatter of lies, words... He's talking about the Old Testament. If you believe what this says, he is talking about the Old Testament. He cannot be talking about the New Testament. It's impossible. See? And so, anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. If you think about it, see, that's what gets me in an argument. When you're debating people, what it is is a lot of times they change the definition or they... Uh, um, well, besides lifting it out of context, I forgot my point of, of what I was going to say. I wanted to share one more thing here with you. I didn't bring it up here. I was watching a video tonight, and uh, this gentleman was talking about uh, Codex Washington Ennis. It was a video, Codex Washington Ennis. Washington, I-A-N-U-S. And he made a statement near the end, and I thought it was interesting. Because in our little town, this is what people do. If you demand a verbalize, verbalizable, verbalizable, inerrant, infallibility Bible with no problems, then you have problems. If your Christian faith does not need an inerrant Bible, and you just need a Bible with the core teachings of the Christian faith, then you're okay. No Bible is perfect. And it's like, to me, every once in a while, somebody says something that's just profound, so profoundly simple that people just don't understand. You know, we have, uh, how many times have people said that the King James is the in inerrant and in fallible word of God? And then they got books of some of the translators. I have a book of the translator that tells you that they didn't put the correct words in and that they used several other Bibles as a basis to do their translating to help get stuff correct for their doctrines and stuff and so uh, anyway there, there's times that uh, you want to be sensitive to people but there's other times it's just kind of fun to challenge people to see where they're at where they're heading you know and so uh, I just wanted to share this with you. I just thought it was interesting. So if you have any comments to say in the comment section, constructively, uh, let me know. Uh, I appreciate you watching this. And uh, Father, thank you so much for this. I just pray that you'll uh, help encourage other people, help them to see that the road is actually a lot more narrower and steeper than what we ever thought it was. And that... Uh, our faith will be challenged and tested continuously by the church, by our friends, by those who are around us. Help us to honor you and to be approved by you walking righteously the way you want us to live and following our teacher, our soul teacher, the Messiah. In Yeshua's name, amen.